go here. <coughs> yeah. There you go. I am. Uh, Stranger Things, I, I, I never... I, I watched the first episode of the second season, but it, it didn't really catch me like the first season did, so... I don't know. The, the intro to the first season, uh, my wife was getting too scared by the intro episode, so we never actually watched it. But yeah, the re- the stuff Microsoft's doing is pretty cool. Yeah, so so it's literally Windows 1.0 that you can download? Uh, it's called 1.11. It's like, it's a fake version of an old retro, you know, Windows 1, but with like glitches and stuff and Stranger oh. things eyes. Ooh. Uh, well, we but are live. They, they did a theme pack. They did a theme pack. That's what I'm talking about. Where it's all like it puts retro sounds on. It has all old school looking wallpapers and stuff. It's pretty cool. It just came out a few hours ago. Nice. Uh, well, we're live and we've got. Uh, oh man, I'm really gonna mess up this name. Asinia <laughs> Lauer from Romania. My name is Mr. Garvey. <laughs> He's, one one day you will figure that out and you will actually understand, Adam. Uh, we we got Big Mama in the house. We got Anthony. We got Fernando. Zero games Fernando for me. Martinez. Whiskey Fernando Omega, Martinez. Friend of the show. Did you guys ever play Grand Theft Auto Vice City? The uh, Emotion to radio station with Fernando Martinez was by far the best, and I still listen to it at least once a month. Nice. Uh, no, Vice City was the one the one I skipped. I never ended up playing Vice City. Played all the other ones, even one and two. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The top-down ones; those were fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got really Patrick. We got Fred from Finland. Nice. Oh. What episode is? This? And 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 uh, super friend of the show. Just kidding. Uh, Eleni Yi. Eleni Yi is <laughs> in the chat from uh, from not here in uh, San Francisco. I'm storing my Subway sandwich uh, in her spot, actually. You can't see it. It's all frame. I'm not even kidding about that. No, it's true. He he has a Subway sandwich, a uh, a vitamin water, and an apple. And his (laughs) belt clip. Uh, Is this 90? 99. 99. The big 99. Sorry, we are not ready, folks. I'm, it's we're been a long recovering. couple weeks. Yeah, a long couple. Well, yeah, it's been a very long. <laughs> it feels like a long month, honestly, to me. But yeah, same here. I'm still not over E3 and Computex and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just been one rolling. I'm thank God that nobody else is launching anything. I mean, it's good for <laughs> consumers, but it's, it's tough for people. Got to play. With I've, I've still got another NVIDIA GPU. That's I'm guessing I'll be have to review for the launch on the 23rd. Oh, oh. The 2080 Super. They said that out loud, so I can say it out loud on go. the podcast. Really? There you go. That's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the OPSEC over there? They're just like, whatever. Forget Super, about it. 1080, we don't care. Forget <laughs> about it. Like, no, they're not nothing secret over there anymore, huh? <laughs> it's not secret when it doesn't matter anymore. Maybe Jensen's just kind of given up. I don't care. Just put okay. it out there. I got all my stack of Founders right. Editions cards ready to go. Have they? Oh, my. Can they say whether the 10, 2080 supers have even gone out? We can't even say that. They can't. You can't comment. I wouldn't say yes or no either way. If so, I had it or if I didn't have it. So, if you did have it, you That's, wouldn't be able to confirm it, even if you were aware of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're just saying you're assuming you're going to have to review it. It's been a crazy. Yes. I know it's crazy, people. I I'm. It, it's insane. Well, well, we'll kick this off. Should we just kick this off now? I I don't even remember because uh, it's been a week. Yeah, let me uh, pull the graphic, uh, and I am ready with the the intro. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a, my I, my allergies are killing me today. Whiskey Did Omega says he can see your uh, twenty eighty super box behind you. Oh yeah, really? One of them. No, you cannot. Oh. I don't have it. <laughs> is it cause there's some right over there? Some kind of green box? <laughs> He's uh, still checking. Yeah, it. there's a bunch of boxes. <laughs> They're all out of focus. You can't tell, Brett. I'm just, you know, looking for... You should... I'll send you all a picture of my room later. I was... My office. I gotta clean it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Maybe after the show. <clears throat> Alright, let's, uh, let's do it. <clears throat> Are we ready? I'm, I'm just waving my nose. I'm blowing my nose. Sorry. Oh, alright. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Brad, how was your fourth? Good time? Uh, there was a bit more working than I would have liked. <laughs> yeah. uh, but aside from that, I managed to have a great day on the fourth, hanging out with friends and family, and then uh, went camping this weekend, which was amazing. Camping. So. Nice. 
All right, ready? Uh, yes, we're ready. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna yep. got some hot stuff here. You know what we're gonna have. I don't even need to work you up on that stuff. Everybody's worked up already. Worked up. Uh, Monday after a four day holiday. Okay, here we go. In this episode of the Full Nerd Ryzen three thousand review, Radeon fifty seven hundred review, and GeForce Super review. Review, review, review. The triple review. Developers, developers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Full Nerd episode 99. I'm your host, Gordon Ma Ung, with co host Brad Charkas. Hello, Internet. Uh, Elaine Yee is not here today. I have my Subway sandwich in her seat. But Adam Patrick Murray is here controlling the vertical and horizontal. Uh, I'm back. And you know what I did uh, for the 4th of July? We, or to, to end the 4th of July weekend? Happy I, birthday, America. I just want to say post. Yes, happy birthday, America. I went to the Alameda County Fair uh, oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, do, what do you like to do at the fair, Gordon? Oh, well. Are you a turkey leg kind of guy? Hmm. You know, the worst thing I ever tried, because you always try things thinking they can't get any worse, but the um, they were fried pickles, pickle fries. I've like never had any Fried pickles? Dude, fried pickles are no, good. No, no, they weren't fried pickles. They were fried pickle fries, because I like pickles. I like fried things. Yeah. That'd be good, right? Well, I've never had anything so salty in my entire life. <laughs> oh, like no, I, they're so good. No, they're good. No, yeah. no, no. Well, I don't know what happened with this person. It was like they were like they dumped it and then the top came off and said, well, I'm serving it anyway. I gave it away. I had like three of them. I was like, I can't finish this. I, I gave them away to some like, you know, kids that were working the front. They're like, yeah, they'll, they'll take it. It's like, oh, my God, this is nice. so salty. <laughs> uh, my favorite there, though, there's there's like a barbecue place. I think it's like Bubba's. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, you you got to be a turkey leg guy, Brad, right? I like turkey legs, but for me, the go-to anytime I go to a festival or fair or anything is elephant fried dough, fried dough, elephant ears. Oh, I don't think I've had that. Like fried cookie dough? I heard, I've seen it's that. It's just a big chunk of fried dough with sugar on it, powdered sugar. Oh, I haven't did, seen that. You called it fried elephant ear. Well, elephant ears is what I called them in the south where I grew up. Up here where I live now, they all call it just fried dough. <laughs> fried dough? You're not talking <laughs> about like funnel cakes, right? That's different. <laughs> No, it's just like a plate of fried dough. <laughs> yeah, here I think we call that a funnel cake. I always like how we have to interpret different parts of America to each other. <laughs> I That's our funnel up. cake. Oh, well, down here, it's a fried elephant's ear. Hey, up, up here in Massachusetts, it's just simply fried dough. No, that's, no uh, this is no different. Yeah. yeah, so people who don't know, I know we got a lot of international viewers. In America, it's just nuts. A county fair is where you have, it's it's... It's like a it's like a Stranger Things episode of just like everything you could fry. Like you could have fried laptop, <laughs> yeah, fried you, laptop there's, at the county fair. There's usually at least one booth that, that says like like bring your own food and we'll deep fry it oh, for I love you. Those. Yeah, deep and, fried mm -hmm. butter, deep fried Oreos, deep fried Twinkies, Twinkies yeah. deep fried Candy ice cream, bars. cookie dough, fig fig Newtons, every single thing you can deep, deep fried fry potatoes. In the is, is like that, you just is take that a whole an potato. American county fair. <laughs> Yeah, hey, and this fried dough thing, uh, this is completely different. This I've never seen this before. It's It looks kind of like a funnel cake, kind of, but yeah. I think wow. it's a funnel. It sounds like a funnel cake to me. Uh, de if definitely a lot it, denser. Try it. Yeah. Life changing. Arter life changing is it'll give you a heart attack. <clears throat> well, uh, you know what might be life changing, Gordon? Uh, it might be this uh, Ryzen 3000 CPUs, right? Yeah, so that, look at that. He's getting his back on track. <laughs> it's we. I know everybody's excited to talk about it. I'm excited to talk about it. I will apologize. I don't have 3700X numbers because, I mean, it was a tough, tough cycle. Cause, and, you know, it, I mean, when we didn't have a formal review video ready. Yeah, uh, review some video. people were like, why did you only have an unboxing? You know, it was it was a long weekend. We didn't have time yeah, to do everything. We, but we will have a formal review video coming up soon, too. The birthday of uh, the most part powerful superpower in the world this is important to us here folks it sure is uh but yeah uh, so well, you do have the review article on pcworld.com i'll link it in the chat right yeah now. It's on, if you go to pc world right now it's on the front page pretty much you would say that this 12 core i did review the ryzen 9 3900x uh, my reference cpu was a 2700x and a also a of course it's primary competitor the core i9 9900k intel of course 8 core versus 12 core and as you can guess this 12 core 7 nanometer ryzen just it's just it, there's very few things that you could say it lost at and probably the weakest part of the cpu which i still actually think is is is, is actually a, a great showing for it is is slightly slower in gaming so uh first of all we'll get into uh in, 
if you get into any encoding, any 3D modeling, anything that really needs all of those threads outside of things that really just simply love Intel architecture, it just, it, it, you know, 12 is, is more than eight, right? And it just simply demolishes the Core i9-900K and every single rendering benchmark I ran. Of course, that's where you always see your heavily multi-threaded uh, and high efficiency. I mean, you get the best scaling out of 3D modeling. It just demolishes it. It also won in 3D, 3D, uh, <clears throat> it also won in encoding, so video encoding. I did HGVC encoding. I did H.264. I also did Premiere, GPU encode, CPU encode, 3900X clean sweep there. There's not anything that it lost. Uh, I, wow. Just about every single thing I ran. There were a few things. Uh, WinRAR has always never been great on on AMD, and again, so for some reason, a little worse here. I didn't get into the memory benchmarks, unfortunately. I know there was some weirdness between the single uh, CCD 3700X and the 3900X, basically better performance out of a 3900X in ADA64, their memory benchmark. I did talk to AMD about it, and they said, well, you know, there are some things, ADA themselves is, you know, it's not necessarily, it may not necessarily reflect real world performance. We'll have to see where, that sort of like lack of it has it does suffer a little bit in memory bandwidth memory latency on ada so figure that out but i mean just everything where you need cpu cores it wins i mean just there's just nothing that it lost and the more important thing of course we all knew that was going to happen because 12 yep. greater than 9 or than 24 eight. is a lot more than 16 and 24 is more than 16 and the the bigger thing to me is the single threaded performance and also performance on light loads that's typically where Intel wins. I mean, they have, you can criticize Intel for being stuck on 14 nanometer for way too long, but you got to give it to Intel. They have refined 14 nanometer and just run the most performance you can out of that process. It seems like they're, you know, 900K is up at five gigahertz most of the time. Um, and the KS so, that's coming out this, this fall is going to be five across the board yeah and yeah chaos is gonna be five across the board and typically those high clock speeds always sort of benefit intel but the the ryzen 9 3900x on those light loads you know i was seeing four six sometimes it was it was pretty you know it was actually dead even slightly faster in some things and then um actually we can pull up one chart i i always like to kick that off this first one yeah we'll pull off that first chart and see if i can All find right, there it. You oh, go. that one so that one is and again this is cinebench um, so it is not reflection of, of all applications, but let me tell you something. There is no one thing you can run that is an app, uh, a reflection of all performance, but it just, I like to get an idea of how the performance, how the CPU responds with the Cinebench score from one threads to the, basically the maximum amount of threads that that CPU has. So from one to 24 on uh, 3,900 and from one to 16 on 900 K and you can see it's basically at that left side of the chart where uh, Intel usually stomps all over Ryzen from Threadripper to Skylake X to, to Core i9. They typically win on that left side of the chart, but with this 7 nanometer Ryzen 3900, they don't give anything up. They don't give anything up. And then you get to that right side of the chart and it, they just, look, you, you, got, you get more cores, you get more bars. Let's look at it as percentage. If we can go to the next chart, Adam. Uh, we sure can. And I'm slow on the take here. Whoops. <clears throat> we're all slow. And it's Monday. Nope, wrong one. And there we go. So this is as as a percent change, right? I mean, as you can see, and unusually when I do this chart on say Threadripper versus Skylake X or versus Xeon, it's it's big negatives on that left side of the chart and you know, big big wins for Ryzen on the right side of the chart because more bars, more cores. But they can't hit those clock speeds. They don't have the the IPC. Look at that. It's they're dead even with Core i9, which is a CPU that is really fast. I yeah. You be the hater all you want, folks. Core i9 900 K was was the bar to, to be met on lighter loads, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Real quick, uh, just to clarify, pe people are asking about the uh, MCE on, but PBO off. Uh, you know, can you just talk just quickly about why oh, you it's, reviewed it, both that off. stuff? They're oh, both on on those. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I reviewed as just as I did with the nine hundred K. I ran it with MCE off. I noted that. I still think it is unfair. I don't care. I've had arguments with people on the internet about it. My main argument against why reviewers shouldn't 
ignore MCE off because people go like, oh, well, you, you need to set a baseline performance. Well, look, here's the baseline. If you're a consumer and you buy a 900K and you buy a Z series motherboard, it's going to have MCE on, right? Auto anyway, not necessarily on, which is a different state. For the most part, you're going to get five, six, maybe some, sometimes 10% performance difference from that 9900K. My feeling is it's not necessarily honest to a consumer because you're going to say, well, here's a zero baseline that I'm going to tell you. And then you sort of make up, fill in that blank. No, you know, the consumer's going to, if you're trying to tell the consumer what they're going to get out of the box, they're going to get an MCE auto experience out of the box. 99% of these motherboards. But then what, why'd you turn it to on? Oh, it's of off. It? If it, if well, no, your chart, chart says on. Oh, it's off. They're all off. It's probably just a. Oh, no, 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 it's typo. Just, if you go back to it, it should be off. No, the, the chart says uh, MCE on. Oh, then I gave you the wrong one. Because I did also uh, include okay. it with MCE on because I wanted to see for myself. I should have uh, given okay. you the other yeah. chart. Whoops. Yeah. The thing with, with the MCE, though, is that There's a lot of it charts. varies so much from motherboard to motherboard, too. It's not yeah. a chip. And that's that's the tough part. I mean, because it, yeah. it is a mother it is a motherboard determined, you know, how hard they want to push it. It's basically for people who don't know MCE is multi-core enhancement. It's a thing motherboard makers have been doing for God 15 years ever since core 2 and they auto overclock these CPUs a little bit for you So they all don't do it uniformly, but they all do it I don't mind that you turn it off actually There's a lot of different ways you could look at it But I like if, if you turn everything off like you did in this review then you can count that as the baseline <clears throat> And just know that what you're gonna get is gonna be better in every case. Yeah, but uh, here's one of the things too I also test it with, uh, you know, precision boost overdrive off. Mm -hmm. it, for what I saw, it didn't make that much of a difference with AMD. So if you you turn off PBO, it didn't it didn't really hurt them the way it did hurt Intel. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know. You know, I think sometimes I think people are trying to look for things to favor their brand. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. My feeling is still it doesn't matter. There has to be some way to give people an idea of what they're going to get out of the box. You, I'm going to. I'm going to bet every motherboard is going to give you 5% more mm -hmm. MCE auto. Some yep. of them are going to give you 10% more. Some are going to give you 7% more. But to basically say it's zero, and then this is, but it fundamentally bothers me because that is not the performance you are going to see out of the box as a consumer. It'll be 5% <laughs> more, right? So what are you trying to do as a reviewer? I mean, I, I don't know. You want to give the, the, the person who's going to put their money down you know, an honest view of, of what they're going to get. So that, that bugs me. Doesn't matter anyway, because even with MCE <laughs> on, they still lose. Yeah. Um, I mean, to, to, it beside that point that, that it's able to trade blows on those single core, uh, charts is like, wow. Okay. That's, right. that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, it just, everything, uh, single threaded light loads, uh, just about, I didn't find, I didn't run any single test the outside of gaming where Ryzen nine did not win. I mean, it just won everything. Right? And I'm sitting here so looking at the gaming ones, and that is awfully co close. That's effectively tied in CSGO. It's 15 frames slower <clears throat> per second, but that's at 355 frames per second versus 370. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm looking like uh, Shadow, Shadows of Tomb Raider, you know, with a 1080, so it's bottleneck, but with you when you run it with a, tw a 2080 Ti, fastest GPU you can get, you know, maybe 4% slower. Generally, I would say performance versus uh, 9900K, which is a hell of a fast CPU in gaming at 1080p with a very fast video card. Um, you know, I think probably I saw 1%, sometimes dead tied to worst case Far Cry 5, where it was like 15% slower. Far Cry, Far Cry 5 just it just runs really poorly on, on Ryzen, interestingly. I, I didn't really pay attention to that, but... Mm. Uh, it's so close. I would say I know a lot of people. I was reading, you know, forums and responses, and people were like, "Oh, you know, the gaming is." I'm I'm bummed. It's it's only the same or slower. To me, especially when you look at the gaming charts that I have versus the 2700X. Yeah. And 2700X, which was the best AMD had for consumer parts, up against the 9900K, was always almost 15 to 20 percent slower at 1080p. And that's with a 1080. You're not even GPU bottleneck. If you threw in, if you threw, that's when you're, you know, the GPU is more uh, of a bottleneck. If you threw in a 2080 Ti, I bet it'd, like it'd be even worse. It's almost, and this is not, this is not new to 2700X. This goes all the way back to 1800X. You know, Ryzen generally was, you know, 20 to 10 percent to 5 percent slower than than Core i9 at low resolutions. 
where you're not GP bottom like that. 1440p, it didn't matter. It just doesn't matter. In fact, I didn't even bother to run the charts here. I did run 1440p gaming test. Mm-hmm. What was the point? Even with the 2080 Ti, it was like there was no point. It mm-hmm. didn't matter. It just mm-hmm. didn't matter. What, your 2080 what, Ti with these chips, you're all running just about the same. What I find interesting looking over your gaming results is even the 1080 GTX 1080 Founders Edition at 1080p resolution, it was still GPU bottlenecked. Like, uh, the CPUs, they were effectively the same. Like, for there to be any difference in gaming between this new Radeon part, uh, Ryzen part, and the Intel 9900K, you have to be at 1080p resolution using, like, a 2080 Ti. <laughs> like, yeah, $1,200, 20, the fastest video card on the planet currently, just to, to see yep. it open up. Right? At 1080p resolution, because if you move up to 1440 or 4K, they're going to be the same again, so... This is, for the first time since Ryzen came out, I consider this them to be not technically drawn even with Intel, but effectively for all but the very edge cases, drawn even with Intel and gaming. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, and uh, at, at a cheaper price for performance. So, yeah. And which we have a slide for that. If oh, you, yeah. If you want yeah. to talk about that? Do we, do we want to do this price yet? But I, I just want to say, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is something very much people should keep in mind as they look at all the Ryzen reviews today. The gaming stuff is so close. Are you going to give up all of that other performance for 5% for 9900K? I mean, especially for content, you know, if somebody mixes content creation in there, yeah. you know, maybe if somebody's just a pure gamer and has money to burn, right? You know, yeah. But. And I, I think we kind of hinted at that, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago after they did the, the reviewers day. I think it's so close. It doesn't matter. And they've sort of achieved that. And it, it was the one thing that I was just kind of like, just kind of buggy about Ryzen. It was like the one thing that you said, hey, I'm going to buy 9700K. I'm going to buy 9900K because gaming performance and that yep. was fair right now i think it's so close i don't know if i would i would do it you certainly can you can justify it that's fine but you know i i don't think it's i think it's a tie in gaming big wins everywhere else unless yeah. you're uh for me unless you're like a professional esports player who needs every kind of frame <laughs> yeah. i i couldn't recommend a 12 core 24 thread effectively equal in gaming you know, that beats the 8-core 9900K, in my opinion. Well, we got some people yeah. in the chat saying uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus is still recommending the 900K for the gaming chip. Yeah, uh, I mean... It is. It, it is. It depends yeah. on how you define it. Because, yeah. I mean, it is faster. It is a bit faster. Uh, yeah. But look at what you get for your 500 bucks either way. Is You got to look at it as the whole package, in my opinion. Yeah, I I can't I can't not not look at those other benchmarks. There's I do more. I don't play gaming. The games are not that important to me that I'm I'm going to give that up. So I would go for the 12 cores. I do think yeah, 900K is still is a great gaming part, but before it could really justify it now, it's pretty damn close. I mean, there is a winner. Yes, if you had to say which is the faster gaming CPU, yeah, 900K, yeah, but enough to justify. You know, I I don't I don't I don't. It's, I don't agree with that necessarily. Yeah, you get what eight fewer threads, four fewer cores, right? In is, exchange for that zero to whatever percent right. gain in performance. At the same time, though, I I do think people should lose sight. It, this doesn't mean I mean that nine hundred K you just shouldn't buy. I'm not saying that. I I do think like yeah, yeah if you're a professional cyber athlete, yeah, nine hundred K overclock. Who the hell's gonna beat that? That's a great CPU. Uh, I also think if you need quick, uh, if you quick sync, quick I sync, did a handbrake yeah. encode um, with the latest version of uh, latest version of handbrake. I did an HEVC encode, uh, which is basically an AVX load. Apparently, they are using X two two six five. Ryzen thirty nine hundred still wins, beats up all over the ninety hundred K in handbrake when you're doing a CPU encode. But you know, hey, when I select the quick sync encode, uh, it was something like, you know. 3,000 seconds on one versus 3,400 seconds on the other down to like 400 seconds. It was like it was like four minutes instead of a 15 to 20 minute encode using CPU it was like a four minute quick sync encode. So there are really use cases definitely, for definitely. for uh, yep. 900K. I, mm-hmm. well, I would 100%. I would not say it's like, oh, my God, I would never buy one. But it's you got to have a reason for buying one now is the thing. Yeah, you got to have a reason. And it's it's gotten a lot harder than it did before this series of CPUs, right? 2700X, and, and you know, people 
people got all over my butt because I said 9800K was a fantastic CPU when it came out. People were like, what, 2700X gives you so much more performance for so much less money. Yeah, but 900K gave you so much of other stuff. You paid more. You had to pay for more. They charged exactly what they, they thought it was worth. And if you needed it, it was it was worth it, right? Right now, this is not 2700X versus a 900K. I'd say you really got to like, you have to have a very specific need for it. It's it's really a tough, it's really a tough justification in my, in my mind anyway. Uh, I consider this like, we haven't gotten to the end yet, but to me, this is like, this whole launch is almost uh, like AMD like dropping the mic. Not like we just murdered Intel, but, but like, hey, we're here. Like we're not the also ran anymore. Like this, these are, we have serious hardware. Yeah, yeah. They really it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like they've ever really felt like they're we can proclaim victory. You mm-hmm. know, eighteen hundred X was a fantastic cost thing. Mm-hmm. Twenty hundred X fantastic cost. Thirty nine hundred X is clearly hey we're in front. You know. Yep. This is like. What what do you? I mean, it's just this thing is so stupidly fast in all those content creation, a lot of video encoding. I I just it's a I think it's a it's a it's a total victory, you know. And the, and the gaming is so close for most people, you can't tell that. I would think thirty nine hundred X just makes more sense. So and PCIe four, and you get a cooler and the cost savings. We should do that cost graph. I love the cost graph. Yeah, we have here, here, here it is. And that basically, so I, I take the CPUs, and this is not counting the latest price cuts to 2700X, but uh, I just look at how much each company charges for the CPU going off retail as of, I think, about uh, three weeks ago. And you can basically take all of the Ryzen parts and put them on one side of that chart and put all the Intel parts on the other side of that chart. And it's, it's a just, cost per thread. Cost per thread. Sorry, it is. it does feel like... I guess it is actually a Monday, isn't it? <laughs> Clarifying for audio only listeners. For audio only listeners. Oh, so it is cost per thread. Good, good point, Adam. And look, <clears throat> the uh, Ryzen 5 2500, twelve dollars per thread. It's just crazy, right? The lowest cost Intel CPU that I've included on the list. Oh, even the i5. It's just interesting. So the the Core i9 9900 non K is twenty seven dollars per thread. And the Ryzen 5, 2600, $12. The Ryzen 7, 2700, $13 per thread. Wow. Ryzen 9, 3900, 3700, 3600, and 3900 are all $21 per thread. And like, it's just like nothing. The interesting thing, I was like, oh, maybe I forgot to include a Core i5. No, I did. Uh, the Core i5, 9600, which is the best uh, for an i5. It's because there's no hyper threading, mm-hmm. thirty seven dollars per thread. The guys at uh, Gamers Nexus actually they made a point of getting the Ryzen five thirty six hundred review out yesterday. Yeah, and yeah. they said it just stomps all over. There's no reason to buy a Core i five anymore. They said. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's it's been tough, right? I five yeah. and i seven have been really tough to justify, except for high clock gaming applications, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, quick sync. There's still there are still the things that do matter. Um, yep. For AVX. Intel, AVX. There's also Intel's got fifteen thousand people out there doing software optimization for Intel architecture. They got that too. There's a lot of there's still a lot of things coming from Intel. It's not over. Intel's not gonna they're not gonna roll up in a ball and go away. As much mm-hmm. as you know, certain subreddits think mm-hmm. they're not gonna go away. They're gonna come back. They're gonna come back mean. But right now, today. Ryzen 3000 pretty much just cleans the clock on every consumer Intel CPU, it seems like. And that's the first time you can say that in, like, probably 15 years. It's been a long time. This is, like, a big day for AMD. I can see why they're very proud of this. It is. You know, it's it's really interesting. So I used to work for a, a publication where we only reviewed high-end hardware. The, the very mm-hmm. best, most, you know, every single machine was a boutique system. Just beautiful, mm-hmm. hand-built, you know, all that coolness. And it went from, it, it, <laughs> I remember some of those days where it went from like, uh, it was just all Intel, Intel, Intel for years and years and years. And then suddenly no one would send you an Intel box. Every single boutique vendor were like, hey, if, uh, our customers want AMD. We're making AMD. Everybody was pushing. It went on for maybe two years. Of, you would not even see an Intel box. 
You, you know, nobody would say, because are you crazy? I would not send you a, a Pentium 4, <laughs> Pentium D right now. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to do that, right? It's just like, and I kind of wonder if we're going to be in that period where it's going to be all Ryzen for sustained period or whether Intel's going to come back and, but. and have their, you know, core architecture revision moment or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, you know, it'd be interesting, but it just, it is, it's all about, it's all about Ryzen. Three, Ryzen 3000 did not disappoint. It doesn't feel like there's any surprises left because everybody's been talking about this for so long, but yeah. it, mm -hmm. it has actually landed and I got to say, it has met everybody's expectations. Probably exceeded some, because I think a lot of jaded people were like, oh, there's no way it's going to be real. But this this thing is a real deal. Ryzen 3000 is the most significant CPU. And I, I said in my review, since the uh, you know K7 Athlon, first the gigahertz and Athlon 64, I mean, this is like, this is a big deal. We'll see what they can make of it, but damn. Well, I'm probably, I bought first gen Ryzen. I mentioned this on a few episodes before. Because of the upgrade feature, and looking at these results, man, I think I'm going to spend a few hundred bucks and get one of the eight core chips because nice. that gain in gaming performance is a big deal. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, but we do have a lot of people in the chat who've been screaming at me to ask about the boost clocks. Uh, I guess there's a problem with the with the boost clocks uh, with some, with some people. Can you can you talk about that? You know, I, I saw some chatter. Some people are saying that some of the BIOSes that were given to reviewers and some other boards were not hitting their full boost. I was seeing four six four five in some. Some of the tests. Uh, I think the guidance that I've seen is, and I have to go back and check the download uh, because once, as a reviewer, y you have to realize there's a certain point where you can't get, Brad will attest to this, you can't get two thirds into all your testing and then have them say, oh, you need to throw away everything you've done and start all over again. You're sort of fully committed at a certain point. So it, basically, once the review was done last week, middle of last week, I, I couldn't come back. There was just there's there's no way to come back. Mm -hmm. I think I did use MSI boards and X570 Godlike. I think the BIOS updates that I saw people talk about today were some of the Gigabyte boards. So I don't think I I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and check the download site today to see if there was a, an updated BIOS. But I don't think it it's going to affect my score as much at all. Okay. And I I don't know I. If people are saying this is going to suddenly make it run at higher frame rates in games, I'll be interested to see. But you know, we'll certain people will certainly retest it. Yeah, and and I mean, whatever gain that you might get from it is is a good thing, right? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. it's not like it's lacking. Uh, and we do have some people asking about uh, X570 um, <clears throat> over on Discord. Uh, Incendium is asking about. Uh, did you notice any fan noise issues uh, with with the boards that you were using for the chipset? I did not notice any noise. I know there's probably a fear because those little tiny chipset fans are something we haven't seen in 10 years. I don't think it's a, a big deal because of the amount of fans that are running in modern gaming systems. And then for my testing, I had the the CLCs going full blast. I test with the fans going full blast, and I also have an external fan blowing into an open case just to make sure that you know there's no throttling of any of the VRMs I or anything. I am kind of bummed that we're getting back to motherboard fans again because I mean like those aren't easily replaced <laughs> if they if they you know give up the ghost and they're not going to make massive amounts of them they're not stock fans so it's going to be real hard to find replacements if you have to but I think it's worth it to get PCIe4 and all that jazz. Yeah. Do you have any plans to review a PCIe4 SSD? Uh I guess so we do have we have a standard Test bed for reviewing um, SSDs. It is not PCIe 4. So mm -hmm. I, we could run some numbers on the Ryzen build we have. In fact, all the tests I did were with uh, a PCIe 4 SSD, the uh, Corsair, is it MP600? MP600. No, MP600 yep. SSD. It was every bit, you know, it's a Fizon controller, pretty much the same as what you're seeing on a Gigabyte. And it was, it was, <laughs> it was pretty fast, right? Five, five gigs read, 4.3, 4.4 writes. So it was a decently fast. SSD. I imagine that's going to get better as we see uh, more improved PCIe 4 SSDs and controllers and the NAND. It'll get better over time. Um, for the chipset fans, it's actually funny because <laughs> I remember actually like, oh, damn, the chipset fan on those. People don't remember the Enforce motherboards. Mm -hmm. That's back when NVIDIA used to make AMD chipsets. 
Mm-hmm. Then some of those, yeah, I had a, like, oh, the chipset fan died. So you'd like, you'd go find another <laughs> motherboard that wasn't being used and you'd steal the chipset fan and all that. <laughs> I did talk to MSI and they said like, yeah, uh, they actually did put um, a 10 more attention in the chipset fan because they said, yeah, we are aware that, you know, they get clogged with dust. They, they fail. Mm-hmm. They said they relied on their Frozer expertise from the G, the uh, add-in board side so the frozer people kind of worked on the fan to make sure it would be better so hmm. that makes sense that's pretty cool actually yeah uh we have another question from uh from discord uh talking about ryzen memories uh or the memory uh speeds uh does running the ideal 37 33 megahertz versus 3600 megahertz affect performance enough to worry uh, if yes, do you think that profile would be supported on X470 chipsets? You know, I don't think so. I think they said, what, over, is it over 3733 goes, because it's one to one, right? I forget what the ratios are, but there's a certain point where you cross it where you start running the the, um, the Infinity Fabric slower. Uh, I do remember, one thing I'm just going to rely on instead is AMD's. Robert, Robert Halleck was here a couple weeks ago. And he, or Jesus, was that last week? And he basically said, yeah, 3,600 <laughs> is sort of the sweet spot you want to be at. Yeah. So they've been saying that for a while. CL15, um, you know, people have definitely pushed it up into higher speeds, but I do know uh, there was guidance from Asus as well. It's like, yeah, you know, 3,600, you know, right in that range is kind of like where you, you start to see diminishing returns past that. So Yeah, if you, if you go back and watch that special edition of the Full Nerd that we did with Robert Halleck and Scott Herkelman, uh, this literal question was asked, and Robert spent a few minutes going deep into cast timings and stuff yeah. like that, and saying thirty six hundred is what you want. So that's yeah. straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, also, a question that's been lingering around for a while, uh, Gordon. I, yeah. th- I think you kind of already mentioned it, but uh, is is Intel screwed? Uh, is a ninety nine hundred K dead? Now, you know, uh, no. All those life changing questions. I, I don't think it is. I do think. The rumors of Intel cutting its prices, I, I do think they should really consider that. I mean, yep. from Intel's point of view, it's like, what, what's our problem? We can't make enough of these to sell, and you want us to cut the prices <laughs> of them? Like, we'll just sell them at the higher prices. If it slows down and it makes it a little harder, from their point of view, it's probably not that bad. Their situation is they got to get that 10 nanometer process going. They got to get something. They got to get up. This is the last stop. I mean, KS is technically the last stop for 14 nanometer, but. They desperately need something more to compete with Ryzen 3000 at this point. Uh, Yeah, they need to cut prices. Uh, They need to get to 10 nanometer. It's going to be a really, really rough year, at least for Intel, till they get to their new process. Hopefully, if the new process for them, if it works out, it'll put them on better footing. But right now, it's really tough. Uh, For Intel, the good news is that's only desktop, right? Yep. Laptops for consumers, which is what we're all talking about. Consumers, there's no competition. Intel rules the world in gaming laptops, ultra portables like this lovely uh, HP here. This is not an Apple. I'm just I'm just trolling you. The, the, they they yeah. got to be getting worried about the server market before long. When yeah. these Epic chips come out based on this, though, those those might turn some heads. Yeah. So their Intel's main concern is not desktops because it is a fairly small sliver of all computer sales these days. They're more concerned about laptops. They're more concerned about servers. And they are going to be defending the server and laptops more so than desktops. I, I do think they will come back at some point with desktop and it'll be a fight again because Intel, Intel AMD fans, hey, you know what? You get to celebrate, you get your parade, all that stuff. Intel does not mess around. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I've been doing this a long time. And you, you sometimes you think you put into people think, oh, Intel's done, right? They're down the corner. They come back <laughs> and they hit hard and they have in the past. And perfect example. Uh, when we're going back to those uh, 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 FX64, those Athlon 64 processors, they basically, they're like, they wipe, wipe the Pentium 4 from the high-end scene. Nobody would send Pentium 4 machines anymore, Pentium D machines. It was all about Athlon 64 for a year, two years. And then it came out with Core, right? Mm-hmm. Core was like, it was no joke. And you, you want to see a reset immediately overnight? Suddenly, nobody would send Athlon 64 machines because nobody wanted to get their nose punched in. Everything was Intel. It turned overnight. <laughs> so that you have to prepare yourself for that possibility happening. 
the different situation is they can't run away and process anymore. You know, AMD's, they said this a couple of years ago. They said, look, every time in the past, we'd catch up to Intel, we'd grab onto them, they'd slip out of our hand because they'd go to like, oh, new, you know, smaller process, you know, uh, 32 nanometer. And they just like, they'd slip right out of their hand again. They'd be in front. Well, AMD's like, they're not going to really go anywhere. They're going to go to 10 nanometer, then what? I mean, it took them forever just to get there. They're not going to beat us. So that's mm -hmm. that could be a changer right now. We don't know. I can't predict the future. Nobody knows the future, what's going to happen. But I wouldn't count Intel yep. out. But I nope. it, this is Intel's biggest challenge probably since Athlon 64 because they can't run away with process, right? Nice. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, another one from the uh, Discord uh, about laptops uh, from Sh uh, Shinoda. Um, with AMD's incredible TDP in their new CPU and GPU, do you think uh, it'll even be hinted at, hinting at plans on going into the laptop market since it's fully under the control of NVIDIA and Intel? What, what do you think they're going to go do Ryzen 3000? Do you think it's going to go into to laptops anytime soon? Oh, I, it will definitely go into laptops. And I, th I think that's when we get real, real competition to Intel and NVIDIA who essentially rule laptops right now. It feels like 90% of all laptops are Intel and NVIDIA. You get 70 intermediate, seven nanometer Ryzen, you get seven nanometer Navi mm -hmm. into a laptop. I, I, all bets are off. I don't know how it's gonna, I don't know. But you know what, it takes a long time to make a laptop. It's not just simply, desktops are fairly simple machines next to a laptop. There's a lot more going on in a laptop you have to be aware of. But you know, looking at the power efficiency of these seven nanometer parts, you know it's gonna be a beast. When that's going to happen, I don't know. I would think hopefully sooner rather than later, but AMD is still a very small company. And to get all the OEMs, to get all these designs and get into laptops, and there is a, there is a crap load of stuff going on in a laptop than there is on, on a desktop. You have to get all that lined up. You have to get it right out of the gate. I think it's going to be a roll thread. If uh, AMD was had the budget and was smart, they might want to consider doing something like NVIDIA just did. Interesting timing, I guess, uh, with introducing NVIDIA Studio laptops revolving around content creation because AMD's parts excel at that stuff. And that would be a good way, I think, for them to try to get a crack into the laptop market. Hmm. Yeah. Good to point. come up with good some point. old branding scheme along that on their end. Uh, we got a question from uh, Lechiro on the Discord. Um, with the release of PCI 4, would it be possible to see stuff similar to Intel Omptane, extremely fast storage that can be used as RAM or swap area? Um, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because Intel's invested a decade's worth of work with Micron into making Optane, 3D, X-Point, Cross-Point Media. I guess if the interesting thing would be like, hey, maybe with Micron working with uh AMD, they could do it, but I don't think AMD has the resources to simply produce, magically replicate what Intel and mm -hmm. Micron have been working on for the better part of 10 years, I think. Okay. Uh, here's a good one from uh, Kami. Uh, did Intel themselves make Zen 2 such a winner product? Did AMD work mm -hmm. on Zen 2 expecting to compete with 10, Intel's 10 na nanometer parts and Intel under-delivered? Yep. That'd be my guess, looking at the roadmaps. Yeah. I mean, it's like a perfect storm for AMD or, you know, they have a back to the future machine because they always seem to land in the perfect opportunity to ruin Intel's parade. It's, it's just amazing to me. They, they we're just in the situation because Intel can't get 10 nanometer to work, right? It looks like. Uh, was it Ryan Smith, the editor in chief of Anantech, did a, a, a tweet that I thought was really interesting over the weekend where he was saying, for years we've been saying it's going to take AMD coming up with a roadmap and executing it relentlessly and for Intel to falter at the same time for AMD to pull ahead. And that seems to be what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but the interesting Those thing 10 is 10 nanometers, 10 nanometers has just been there, you know, the burden around their neck, their albatross or whatever. Yeah. Well, and you know, even 14, it, they had problems getting to 14. So it's really interesting. I mean, they're, I think that's probably what hurts the most uh, with this is, AMD has a better process than Intel. <laughs> I mean, yeah. For so many Intel, you know, people don't realize this, but Intel, people you, you read it as arrogance. It's because when you've been when you've been the champs for so long, you get arrogant, right? And they they're no longer the the champions of process. 
Which is interesting, you know? Like, way back in the day, there might have been once or twice where they released new products on the same process technology relatively close to each other. But I don't know if AMD's ever beaten Intel to a process node before like that. No, they never have. Which <laughs> is, I mean, that's, to me, part of the significance of this is like, holy smokes, AMD successfully arrived with a really good chip on a really good process at the right time. And that's just, yeah. it's just all, it's all kinds of bad for Intel right now. And it's just, it's just terrible because what do you do? I mean, and a lot of people pointing out the, uh, in the chat, pointing out the security flaws as well. Yeah. You know, I don't know that what stuff happens. So that stuff happens. I don't know what to make of it. And I, I don't know whether the, fl the security, fl you know, I, you never want to brag about security because you don't want to invite the the wrath <laughs> right. of the people who like hey, oh. Apple does it all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like the whole thing is like, is was OS ten really more secure than Windows? No. Or was it because Windows was always located in a high crime neighborhood, and <laughs> OS ten was basically in, in a small rural town in Iowa? It's like I leave my windows open all night, and nothing ever happens here. See how secure we are? Well, why would I want to go break into your house in Iowa? I, I got this. We got like a, we got. Thousands and thousands of homes I can break into here. When I run out of these homes to break in, I'll break into your house in Iowa. It's just kinda, I don't think it's anything you want to brag about. I think the security stuff hurts Intel the most right now. That stuff could turn around in two months where it hurts AMD. You just you don't mm -hmm. you never want to you never want to tempt that. Good so. point. Good point. You, you don't want to do that. Uh, Noel in the YouTube chat's asking, uh, should they wait for the thirty nine fifty X? If you need sixteen cores. <laughs> Yeah, you need if you really need that kind of like sixteen cores and a PCIe four consumer motherboard. I don't even know if what's consumer anymore because these things are six hundred dollars. <coughs> it thirty nine fifty X might be worth. But that's an important thing to consider. Even though that that being in a consumer motherboard makes a big difference to process, so there might still be reasons to go to Threadripper because it does have the more uh, PCIe slots, PCIe lanes. It has it does have platform advantages over consumer motherboards. So if you're waiting for that, depending if you are considering waiting for a 16 core processor, you probably have a reason for it. I would say look at your workload and try to figure out if it's better to wait and invest in the consumer or if you should just make the jump to Threadripper. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely if you really need that lots of memory, lots of PCIe, even though it's PCIe 3 uh, and a lot, you know, lots of storage, then big, big, big sockets might be a better alternative for you because you can you're not going to stop at 16 you can go 32 cores maybe there's talk of a 64 core third ripper skylake x xeon also excellent platforms pricier but you know also excellent platforms uh Harry's whenever the next gen third ripper does come out i'm sure it's going to be on pcie 4 so if that is a difference to you it might be worth waiting even longer hmm. yeah uh harry's asking uh, is game mode beneficial on a 3900x did you try game mode specifically I did not try game mode. Uh, you know, it was interesting. I remember one of the slides at the uh, reviewers' day in at E3. They actually had a creators mode or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, don't pay attention to that." So I didn't mess with any of those modes. They, just, they said it was left in for some reason in the, in the screenshot. Hmm. So I did not mess with it. I I can't go mess with it. I I, I doubt it'll matter. Okay. Uh, Gert Tractor, a couple more questions for the Ryzen stuff, and then we can move on. Uh, Gert Tractor is asking, uh, is there any hint that the 7 nanometer plus chips after this being compatible with the AM4 again? Do you think they'll stick with AM4? Wait, which which chips? The, they, the next gen. Yeah, the oh, fourth gen. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it'll be... I think we're gonna. I think the next chips are gonna are gonna be a big break. They made a really good point of like, look, we've given you incredible. We've gone from those early um, APUs a, to yeah. to seven nanometer in the same socket, and they were like, "Believe us, it wasn't easy." And they even had they trotted out the guy who like worked on the socket engineering and areas like this wasn't easy, folks. This is, we did it. We pulled it off. An incredible like. I mean, it's really because my question was like, well, what did you give up by giving us all this backwards compatibility? Would have been, you know, like, because you, you know, in engineering, you got to give something up to get something. And it was like, well, that's a really good question. Uh, well, it would have been cheaper. We could have done it lighter. It's like, oh, it seems like a lot of great things if they just left AM, AM4 behind, but they, they weren't going to do it for this one because they were committed to it. Um, I do think AM5, they said it would take a major change. DDR5 would be perfect for that. Huh. 
Mm-hmm. You know, un- unfortunately, PCI six wrecks my whole mantra of, of mm-hmm. PCIe five. <laughs> PCIe five and DDR five and AM five. It's got a good <laughs> ring to it. Yeah, right. Uh, and again, sorry to do this again, but when we had Scott and Rob on the special episode of the Full Nerd last week or two weeks ago, um, someone asked Rob that, and he went into much greater detail about having to change. Or it might have been you who asked him. Uh, about how they would need to change the pin layout or it'd have to be a major upgrade like DDR5 to make them leave AM4, though. Yeah. And, you know, it is. It, there is a certain point where I I know people love the backwards compatibility, too, but you got to... Mm. It holds you back. It, it It is, again, it was... They were... The fact that they were able to make it work was amazing, but it also holds mm-hmm. them back. So you kind of, like, wonder what could have been more if they had given it up. And you don't want it to actually hold you back to have that socket to just be wedded to those to the to the five percent of people who upgrade in the same board to 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 mess it up for everybody else and i I do think ddr5 is a great time to say hey bye um i wouldn't be surprised either way if the next gen if the next gen ryzen chips stayed on am4 i wouldn't be surprised if they moved on i wouldn't be surprised i would expect am4 to go away right around the time that AMD expects Intel to get its 10 nanometer process together. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like that makes Good sense. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And then you have said 2020, right? Through 2020, so... Yeah, Ryzen, Ryzen 2020, yeah. Ryzen 3000 will take us through, you know, at least next middle of the next year, I'm going to guess. Who knows? At least next year, so... It's not going to go away immediately, but it, don't get too... I'm just saying... Don't get too wed to it. It's like I have that that beef against ATX. I love ATX. At the same time, I do think people need to think outside the box because it is holding us back at this point. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, last question: a lot of people are, are wondering uh, about your review of the thirty eight hundred X, thirty seven hundred X. What you know? What, or, or are you going to continue to to check out the other chips? Uh, thirty seven hundred X. I do need to to fire up now. I mean, I was concerned with the twelve core. I really want to see how that twelve core sings. It does sing. Uh, 3800X was not sampled through any reviewers in the first round. Mm. I don't know why that is. My guess is they want to stagger them because they want to elongate the the, the, the new cycle. Mm. So 3600, except for Steve, he's screwing it for, for everybody. <laughs> and uh, 3800, I'm sure, will come in a later cycle. Okay, cool. It's yeah. uh, not to sound woe is me here, but with all these products launching on the same day and NVIDIA also doing the Super the week before, uh, it's been a real brutal, you know, couple of mo- weeks, month for us. So if anything's missing like that, stuff like that, it's all due to time constraints. There are only so many hours in the day, and all this stuff took a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, luckily, Brad did GPUs. I did CPUs this time. So yep. it's, there's some people who are doing everything. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is nuts. Yeah. A lot of people seem to be uh, excited to hear about the 3800X. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Of course. Eight cores, higher TDP. I imagine it'll. I suspect AMD is trying to save that. Maybe you know there's still rumors of a ten core Intel part. Maybe they think they mm-hmm. can tune that up a little bit to be as competitive with the ten core part. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but maybe. Well, I think you can buy it now, can't you? The thirty eight hundred X. That was all. Yeah, part yeah, of it, it should be on sale, yeah. right? Yep, yep, yep. It just didn't go out. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people saying that you know, I mean. This seems to be a paper launch anyway, because uh, a lot of people aren't finding of products. So you know, where they think that I, would, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's marketing to play. Um, these days, all the big high profile launches like this, they all sell out pretty quick for the most part. I wouldn't be surprised if companies purposefully release certain stock levels so that they do sell out in the first day or two, and then half a week from now we start to see more. I think, you know, I I know people say it's just you know they're they're saying paper launch but I, and I haven't verified if they're real but i saw pictures in reddit of people standing in line at micro centers because you know yeah there's still retail places you could buy this stuff at <laughs> it was like what is this a black friday sale in november or something like this no they were like it was like 50 deep to go into micro center at like seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> And I don't know if they were real or they were oh, photoshopped you know what? or what. Maybe, but maybe that's where Elena is. Yeah, she's that's not probably here today because she she's waiting in the micro center line. I knew it. But when the hell I saw this, said, holy so I haven't seen people stand in front of a store to buy something since Windows 95, right? That was yeah, like right. when it would make the news. People would buy Windows 95, stand in front of CompUSA to buy it. But <laughs> this is people standing in front of a line in micro center at 7 o'clock in the morning, 30, 40, 40 nerds deep. It's 7 a.m. 
I suspect they are actually sold out because they actually got bought. They weren't like, oh, we only made one kind of thing. Paper launches to me is like, we made one. This is like, we didn't yeah. make one. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, speaking of micro centers, if you buy one and you do need the Threadripper platform, uh, they're selling in store only their 12 core Threadripper chip right now, the second gen one, for just $300 now that yeah. this is out. That is so. nice. Well, and wasn't there a, tw- a good 2700 review or a uh, price drop as well? All the if you go to PC World, we did a post on it this morning. All the second gen chips are cheaper than they've ever been. What would so. you do, Brad? That, yeah, the, the twenty seven hundred X was like two sixty, right? right? Yeah, I don't know where it is. You got to go to PC World to find that deal, but two sixty yeah. is pretty good for twenty seven hundred X. Yeah, I, yeah, that is a good question. Yeah, yeah, boy, eighty more dollars for thirty six hundred. Well, you know, not even that. I think the thirty six hundred might be worth it for me because I don't. I hate buying old stuff. <laughs> but to wait, I don't. I don't know if I could wait for the thirty six hundred. You know, if it's been sold out and you have to wait for the next cargo ship to arrive with it, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, if you're waiting. All right. Uh, well, the Ryzen platform was not the only uh, stuff to get released yesterday. Uh, Brad, you you were working hard on uh, some Radeon cards, right? Uh, I to- have been. Yeah, I've been working hard on many video cards. Uh, so yeah, but Navi, the wait is over though. Uh, so Navi, hashtag, new, uh, or hashtag wait is over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I feel so you. old now. I'm just like, what is he yelling? <laughs> <laughs> Does he mean the pound sign? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Navi is here in the form of the Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT. Uh, it's actually been a pretty wild couple weeks for the graphics card market uh, because a week ago, NVIDIA surprised-ish, surprised-ish launched RTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super for 400 and 500 bucks, effectively shifting performance up a tier. So uh, what well, you used to pay 500 bucks and get a 2070, and now you pay 500 bucks and get a 2070 Super, and it performs like a 2080, basically, used to. And the new 2060 Super performs how the 2070 used to. Almost. Not quite, but close. Uh, so that happened last week. Uh, and so last minute, Friday afternoon, uh, I was supposed to go camping at a certain time, and I was incredibly late because I had to write a news post and completely rewrite parts of my review because before... These Radeon cards even launch. AMD dropped the prices. Um, Thanks, AMD. Jeez. No, that's good. That's great. Kidding, that's kidding. great for people who are actually buying the cards. I was not very <laughs> appreciative at the time. Nor were my family who were sitting around like, we're, we're going camping. Uh, but uh, so, yeah. So now the Radeon RX 5700 is 350 bucks. Goes directly against the RTX 2060 non-super, which is sticking around. And the Radeon 5700 XT is 400 bucks, which goes directly against the new RTX 2060 Super. Uh, and both cards, unless you really want real-time ray tracing, are definitely worth it over the GeForce cards. Hmm. If NVIDIA hadn't launched these Super cards, this Navi pair would have been lights out value. Like, it would have made a big splash nvidia kind of ruined that as nvidia often seems to do (laughs) but these cards are still great value they're great performing cards uh they have all kinds of new features one of the most interesting parts to me is between the new rdna architecture and the jump to seven nanometer uh amd's gpus are not power hungry beasts anymore they are equal to or in the case of my test uh with the 20 60 versus the 5700 the 5700 is faster than the 2060 and uses less power so it's actually more power efficient at least in that one test than turing so that's a big change Uh, that hasn't been seen in a long time so yeah great cards uh a a lot of the i saw uh, last or two weeks ago when they had this when you guys did the special edition uh, episode and had the amd guys on a lot of people were complaining about the blower uh on the cards can can you talk about the uh the blowers and your experience with them i sure can the blowers are a lot better than the blowers amd has did before uh 
they're not unpleasant to be around. Uh, the XT blower in particular gets hot. It runs at a full, you know, when it's rated for 86 degrees. Uh, so the Founders Edition cards are definitely cooler and quieter. Uh, I would expect, though, to see add-in board cards have no problem. They'll be they'll be great. Uh, these blower style things. Uh, if you need the blower style card or you want them today, uh, I wouldn't let that turn you off of it hmm. because they're not unpleasant like the Vega ones were. Okay. Uh, actually, I just saw a tweet this morning. I think it was Steve from Hardware Unboxed, actually, who he took a 2090X cooler and put it on a Navi GPU and under peak load, it maxed out at 67 degrees. So that bodes very well for adding board cards that are coming out at some point in the future. Wow. Something that uh, what I found interesting is these cards support PCIe 4.0, just like uh, so they can fit right into the uh, uh, Ryzen. Yes, too many R's. The Ryzen, you know, the X, the new Ryzen chips and the X570 platform all support PCIe 4.0. This does as well. Uh, one of the questions I had for Scott last week is, will this improve Crossfire performance? Um, as it turns out, these new Navi cards don't support Crossfire whatsoever. So that's probably why he was a little bit squirrely on that answer. Uh, so these cards will still support DirectX 12 and Vulkan's explicit multi-GPU modes, which is good. That's theoretically the future. Uh, in reality, they're virtually dead technology nobody no developers ever baked that in and these don't support crossfire so it looks like at least for now uh crossfire multi-gpu is effectively dead on radeon graphics cards hmm. um i wasn't able because i don't have a ryzen system ryzen 3000 system to test pci4 myself however this weekend i went around looking for that and as expected uh, or tech power up tested gaming performance over pcie 4.0 and as expected makes no difference because modern graphics cards don't saturate PCIe 3.0. But uh, Epos Fox, I believe is how you would pronounce it, worked with Wendell from Level 1 Techs, and they did an awesome, awesome like 30-minute video diving into the encoding and decoding features, the new encoder and decoder inside these Navi GPUs, as well as PCIe 4.0 performance. And they say these things are monsters. They're beasts. So if you are interested in content creation benefits of PCIe 4.0, it sounds like these cards kick all kinds of butt. They say it's faster than the 2080 Ti. So, Yeah, and that was also something they, they made a point of showing off at Editor's Day, which there's so much stuff I just lost, got left on the cutting room floor, but they have a DaVinci benchmark that they show like AK, multiple, multiple AK streams running on PCIe 4, kicking butt, and then they'd crank the same card back to PCIe 3 and it would just, you know, drop all kinds of frames. So it, it yep, does look like that is the one salvaging thing for PCIe 4 for GPU at this point. Well, they were testing different popular encode, like streaming Twitch, yeah. YouTube solutions. And according to the Evo's Fox video, which I don't have a link to offhand, obviously, but I retweeted it. So if you follow me on Twitter, go check that out. Uh, you definitely should if you're into content creation. It looks like a big step forward. Uh, Game-wise, these are great 1440p cards. Uh, the 5700 just stomps all over the RTX 2060 uh, as far as performance. Uh, they're equal as far as energy efficiency. And the 5700 has the full 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM over 256-bit bus. So it has a much more robust memory configuration than the identically priced 2060 so i would definitely recommend the 5700 over the 2060 i'm hoping to update our graphics card guide in the next day or two and that's what i'll be doing um the 2070 uh not 2070 the 5700 xt is a super interesting card actually uh it it beats the 2060 super across the board which is identically priced uh and in a lot of games it actually matches the $500 2070 Super in three of the games of the seven, I think, eight that we tested. And what's even more interesting about that is the games that the 5700 and 5700 XT perform so well compared against much higher NVIDIA options are, are in games that used to strongly favor NVIDIA's architecture. So these games, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, GTA V, 
and uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. They used to do a lot better on GeForce cards. That's part of the reason why I included them in my test suite, because I try to balance out these ones favor NVIDIA, these ones, these ones are neutral. Uh, and they are kicking butt in games that used to kick butt only on NVIDIA cards. So the new RDNA architecture is doing some cool things into the hood. <laughs> Uh, we have a question uh, that just came in from Nori. Uh, thank you, Nori. Um, Gordon, wasn't the internet right? Shouldn't we have waited for Navi? Better cards from AMD? Instead of... Uh, but then buying into uh, the 20 series last year? I I don't know. I mean, honestly, ugh, if you always wait, it's always going to get better. So I always think that's... Yeah. You know, I can tell you, I can always be right because I can always say if you just wait two years, it'll get better. <laughs> Well, duh. <laughs> but <clears throat> I think that if people were saying that ray tracing was wrong and that they think that NVIDIA should never have come out with the original 20 series the, of the Turing cards, no, I, I disagree. Ray tracing has to get started somewhere. Ray tracing is a real thing. You know, people who have played some games with ray tracing say, like, damn, it's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. So it I, is. I think... Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to buy into that. I'm, I'm not going to buy into, like, no, we should have just all avoided, you know, touring and waited for Navi. I, I don't think that was, I don't think that would have been the right thing to do for everybody. What about the people who bought uh, 20 series last year and then the, the supers are coming out? Uh, oh, my would God. Would you be mad? No, I mean, it would, I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> Technology always gets better. Technology, let me tell you something. <laughs> if you didn't buy that 2700X, whatever, 12, 18 months ago, you could have waited all the way for 3900x it would have been better it just it's always gonna get better i i don't think people should get all angry about it you get this is like this is like this is like the day you the we used to be with you buy your pc the day you buy your pc it was outdated that used to be the same so now people sure, yeah. what you want it to last for 10 years now and never I wish you could buy something and it never would get better from like to make me feel better for my purchases, but not as somebody who actually likes the advances that that it brings you. So true. Yeah. It's been a year at this point too. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's not like you just bought if, if you just bought the cards like a month ago, you might be a little bit butthurt because these super cards and now Navi completely changed the price to the performance ratio in the three hundred and fifty to eight hundred dollar price range. You're getting a lot more for your dollars now. Uh, that being said, part of the reason why I like the 5700X a bit more than the XT is because the baseline RTX 2060 does ray tracing, but it doesn't do it super spectacularly. Hmm. So it, and it, with the neutered memory configuration and stuff that it has, I just feel like the 5700 XT is a better buy for most people. Uh, that being said, there are only a handful of games that support ray tracing right now. There are, however, a bunch of big name franchises that are getting them. They were a bunch all announced at E3. Doom Eternal's getting it, the new Wolfenstein game, Cyberpunk, uh, Watchdog Legions. So it is gaining traction. Uh, but it is still in the infancy. I can see both sides here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not surprised. It also that these Navi cards lack dedicated ray tracing hardware and as well as variable pixel rate shading which is new technology that was in the Turing GPUs both of those technologies are being supported by Windows DirectX 12 APIs right now uh, but you got to keep in mind that AMD completely overhauled this architecture for these cards so to completely overhaul this architecture and get everything lined up and get these where they're at now and then start adding all these extra stuff into it it I'm not surprised that they chose not to support ray tracing now that i see how fundamentally different the underlying gpu structure is in these okay uh we have a lot of people asking about the uh, anti-lag feature have you tried that out um i have not been able to try it out personally uh i have a big description of it uh inside of my review which is also on pcworld.com shameless plug uh again time constraints i'm hoping to get into both Radeon Anti-Lag and Radeon Image Sharpening this week. Mm. Uh, but Radeon Anti-Lag is pretty interesting. Basically, it tells the CPU to slow down so that it lines up better with the GPU and effectively can shave a frame, a frame or two, off the input response time, mm. which 
for a lot of people, you're not going to notice that. If you're playing high refresh rate, like we were talking earlier, esports games, uh, where every second counts, like it, 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 you know, the extra two frames could make a big difference in the middle of your tournament. If you're that uh, good. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping to check that out later this week and let you know, you know, hopefully measure it, you know, objectively and both subjectively tell you how it feels. Uh, but I haven't been able to test it out yet. Uh, I forget what I was about to say, so I won't. Uh, on that <laughs> on that same tip, uh, RM in our disc Discord is asking: uh, is, Are those features uh, available for the RX five hundred series with the, the new drivers, or is it just limited to the five thousand series? One second, and I'll tell you. I have this right here. Uh. So it works for older cards in Direct X11 games for Radiant Anti Lag. If you're using a DX9 version of one of the esports game, you're gonna need the new graphics cards. Hmm. Okay. Nice. So and that is out right now. Uh, the new Radeon image sharpening uh, needs the new RX 5700 GPUs. That won't work on other hardware. Okay. But there's a lot of great like. This this is a very encouraging release for AMD. Like they've cured their power problems, they've got great efficiency. I wouldn't be surprised if they have even more room to shift pricing down on this if they needed to. Uh, but this is this is these are great releases for AMD. Uh, the the sinister eyes on YouTube. I was asking, uh, d did you check the encoder performance on Navi? I heard it beats two Titan Vs according to Wendell from Level One Tech. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at encoder performance, decoder performance. That's what I was talking about. If you go look at uh, Epo's oh, you were Fox, talking about that did earlier. a great video. Yeah, yeah he he worked with Wendell for all their coverage. They basically worked together like Gordon and I did because Radeon and Ryzen and PCI four and X five seventy and all these SSDs coming out is a lot of work for anybody. <laughs> so they worked together, and he did an excellent long video digging into that. So you should definitely go check that out. Is that the e E P O S V O X. Look for that on YouTube. Huh. Okay. Does that work for you, Adam? I, no, so we're just hardware nerds here, Adam, but we're not yeah. video nerds. Uh -huh. And I often hear that you know, if you move to GPU encoder, quick sync encoder over CPU, it's and this has been said for a long time that is it is inferior to host based CPU encoding. Do you think that any any uh, encoding work should also then come with very very close um, inspection, image quality inspection by a video expert. I mean, because you can have one thing, make it. I can, you know, I can do a quick sync encode in four minutes instead of fourteen minutes. But if the quality is not the same, does it? Does that going to matter? You know, I mean, isn't that a big part of the? I mean, I, I would say it definitely is. Um, I know on the machines uh, that we run here and on my home machine, or like when I when I render out on a laptop. I usually don't see anything that just like jumps out at you. I I, I bet that I bet there will be differences if you really pixel peep, but right. uh, my my guess is that they're they're you know within j just slight variances, and, and especially I mean at the end of the day we put it up on YouTube, you know, and it just gets compressed to, to crap anyway. So sure. like I I. I I think for us making web-based content, it's probably not as a big deal. But yeah, if, if you're in like Hollywood or something, you know, and it's going to be shown on a projection, uh, then yeah, I, I, I think they would care for sure. Sure. Then it would have to be looked at a nurse scope for it to really be. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, there's so many ways you can approach it. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't okay. Know. Um, so, uh, something just to point out that Epos Fox video that I've mentioned like eight times now because it's great. Uh, he did do pixel peeping. So he did look real close at the image, and there is a difference. I think he was talking about Radeon image happening at the time. I think he also did it for encoding stuff. Uh, but he said effectively, they're effectively yeah. similar when you're running it in real life. Yeah. Okay. What's interesting to me about Radeon image sharpening is like when we had Scott on here the other day, it's basically achieving the same thing as DLSS. It's letting you run at 1440p, upscale to 4K, and then Radeon Image Sharpening uses algorithms to smartly apply filters to areas that got blurred out from anti-aliasing and upscaling. It sounds super interesting, actually, and that is kind of setting the path forward for their ray tracing ambitions on a software level now, uh, but also giving you benefit for upscaling, which I think is much more common these days. 
So radiant image sharpening is very interesting, and I want to dig into it a lot more soon. Uh, and then uh, we had a um, uh, question from uh, Kami uh, about overclocking. Uh, they've seen reviews uh, hitting 2 gigahertz, uh, so there's a lot of uh, headroom for uh, AIB cards. Uh, are, are you, did you do any of the overclocking or trying anything out? I didn't have time to do much overclocking. Um, we typically don't run overclocking in our base reviews and stuff because we want people to know what they get out of the box. Uh, that being said, AMD was having some severe issues getting Wattman working correctly. Uh, they gave us, I think we wound up with three or four different drivers where they said, if you mess with Wattman, this is going to be messed up. Okay, this one might be a little bit better. Okay, here's this one. And it wasn't until Friday evening where we got the final one where they said, this should be working great now. So I didn't do much overclocking because I wasn't going to invest more time into that when you can't reliably trust the results necessarily. So it might be something I look back, look at in the coming weeks, but it'll take priority behind things like radiant image sharpening for me. Uh, so I'm not sure. Go look for someone else for an overclock video, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Can I ask you about Game game Boost and... Um over uh, mm -hmm. the boost whatever game. The game game clock and then the boost clock did you where were you finding because i know that they said that uh game clock is where they would expect most games to actually give you the clock speed were you finding that and looking down a lot of the games you're running that's pretty for these card for these cards at least yeah it was pretty it was right in that ballpark uh i expect it to be much higher with add-in board cards as the person was just saying uh those numbers remember are tuned specifically to these reference cards so i'm not surprised they were pretty spot on i expect them to go much higher to see much higher game clocks if you want to call them that uh in add in board cards hmm. uh any more adam from uh, the... yes uh, uh one more major one uh from captain kern uh on discord uh rx 570 performance compared to radeon 7 uh, also, I, I heard somebody earlier uh, comparing it to, um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. So uh, Here's the thing. You don't want to buy a Radeon 7 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, if you're that, a gamer. Okay, continue. Well, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, the, the, somebody else had asked, uh, is uh, is getting a Vega card maybe better price for performance? You know, because they've, they've dropped some prices. Like, wh what do you think? It's complicated. Radeon 7... Unless you bought it for content creation purposes that really need that 16 gigabyte buffer that you don't get out of a RTX 2080, you can't buy a Radeon 7 anymore uh, because it is $700. Uh, it's very closely matched by the new 2070 Super, which is $500. And the Radeon XT doesn't quite match up quite as well, but in a lot of games it does. And that's $400. So don't buy a Radeon 7 for gaming anymore. <laughs> uh, Vega has had some awesome sales recently where I think we saw a Radeon 56 going for 250 bucks, 230 bucks recently, and that's great. But I think the stock levels are starting to get down because I was keeping track of those all last week to see street pricing for Vega, and it was $400 for a Vega 56 and $500 for a Vega 64, just like on launch day. And those are no goes at that price either. Get one of these Radi uh, Radeon Navi cards instead. Wow. So I thought the Radeon 7 was supposed to be the 2080 competitor, but nah. it still is the flagship. It is. The thing is, the 2070 Super is $500 and performs most of the way of a 2080 now. So, mm. <laughs> wow. This new, in the past week and a half, between these new supercards and these Navi cards, like, the price to performance ratio is utterly drastically different than it was before a week and a half ago. And it just left all the Vega cards ruined in the wake. You shouldn't buy a 2080 right now, either. There's a new 2080 Super coming out later this month. If we review it, maybe we'll be able to tell you you could buy that. But right now, don't buy a 2070 non-Super. Don't buy a 2080 non-Super. Don't buy a Radeon 7. Don't buy anything Vega. Look at these new cards instead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, well, why don't we, why don't we uh, switch over to that super section and, and you can tell us exactly why you shouldn't. 
All right, so yeah, uh, I think it was July 2nd, uh, embargoes lifted for the GeForce RTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super. Uh, and like I said earlier, they're both effectively shifting the performance tiers down a pricing notch. So the baseline RTX 2060 is sticking around at $350 uh, with 6 gigabytes of memory and ray tracing. You shouldn't buy it. You should buy a Radeon RX 5700 instead. Um, this new RTX 2060 Super is $400. Um, and it's basically 95% of what the $500 2070 is. So hmm. you're getting 2070 performance for $400 now from the 2060 Super, uh, which is great. That's real great, uh, obviously. The uh, ray tracing performance, all that stuff, they they put more streaming multiprocessors in there. So ray, tra- pro- pro- ray tracing performance has also gone up. Uh, conventional game performance has also gone up. It is basically 95% of a 2070 for $400 now. So a $100 price decrease, which is great. If these cards launched at these price originally, like you, if these RT, these are what I wanted to see at the original RTX series launch. That's what they are now. Uh, the RTX 2070 is essentially uh, not quite as close to 2080 performance as the 2060 super is to the 2070, but it's awfully damn close. You're basically getting almost a 2080 for $500. Now with the RTX 2070 super, there's way too many numbers going on right now (laughs) Pardon my slowdown. Uh, But yeah, but so shifted. So you're getting, you know, much more performance for your dollar. Now Uh, it's killed all the cards we just talked about. Uh, one of the interesting things about the 2070 Super in particular is it switches to a whole new GPU. It's not just a bigger version of the, I think it was GP106 or TU106. I forget, but it's the next It's the next GPU up. Uh, what was the 2080 GPU is now in the 2070 Super as well. And, you know, obviously that's what gives us performance benefits, but it also changes some fundamental aspects of the card. The original 2070 was on a smaller PCB uh, and, you know, only needed a single 8-pin power connector and didn't support SLI. Now that the 2070 Super is using the step-up GPU that was originally in 2080, it's a full-size card. It needs the 8-pin and 6-pin power connector, and it does support SLI now. So that's an interesting product-level change. But, yeah, so these cards kick a whole lot of butt. They both... I gave them both... Five stars and Editor's Choice Awards because now you're getting 2080 level performance, which was eight seven hundred eight hundred dollars for five hundred dollars now. Which used to be so, a 1080 Ti in performance too, right? So, yep. So finally, we're seeing 1080 Ti level performance start to drop. What is it? Three or four years later, finally, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy graphics card market. But yeah, those cards kick ass. AMD's new cards kick ass. There's a whole bunch of price and shenanigans and wars and AMD's kind of claiming that it was playing 5D chess and arranged this thing to bait NVIDIA into setting the higher prices so they could lower these prices. They never said that out loud. They kind of were implying it via various tweets and stuff. But whatever the case may be, the $350 to $500 graphics card range is amazing right now and you're getting a ton more performance. I don't. I don't understand because there's so many price stratifications. I, and you know, I I had somebody question me of like, why would you buy a 5700 when the 5700 XT is fifty dollars more? And it's like, well, if you didn't get fifty bucks, you didn't get fifty bucks, right? But I do wonder, like, where the hell do you pick right now? I'm gonna try to play this game with you, Brad. So like, okay. I I want. I I have. Three hundred and fifty dollars to spend. Three. Let me start at three hundred. Where should I buy? Um, three hundred. You'd have to get the. Uh, you can't get that. That's three fifty. Oh, sixteen sixty uh, Ti then, right? Sixteen sixty Ti, hands down. Assuming that the thing is, 
graphics cards this generation are getting so fast, I really strongly believe you have to plan around your monitor now. Because if you yeah. have a 1080p monitor and you're happy with it, you don't even need to spend the 260 or 280 bucks on a 1660 Ti. You can spend significantly less and get plenty of frames for your monitor. That's right. So, I mean, that is probably, you're right. People should start that. If you're playing single monitor, 60 mm -hmm. hertz, 1080p, what's the mm -hmm. ground floor to get? Basically, across, uh, across the board, very high to ultra settings at 60 frames and up. What do I need? I would... I would probably recommend the 1660 okay. to most people at this point. Um, the 580, if you find it on sale, though, the Radeon RX 580, it'll still do 60 with pretty decent graphic settings in a, a whole lot of games. You can find that on sale for like 150 bucks these days. So. Right. But if you want a little more oomph, get you a yeah. little further down the road, then a 1660 Ti yeah. makes more 16, sense? Six. Okay. 16, 1660 if you're playing on 60 hertz. If you're playing 144 hertz, 1080, I'd get 1660 Ti. Right. And so most people, uh, you only overbuy for your GPU if if you're like, oh, I, I want to take this thing out for, for 60 years or something, right? Yeah. That's, that's the rationale. Yeah. All right. So let's move up to 1080p, 144 hertz. 1660 Ti kicks a lot of butt at that. If okay. you want ray tracing, you might want to start considering the oh. RTX 2060. Yeah. But in my head, now that the 2060 Super is there for 50 bucks more, it makes it real hard to buy the RTX 2060 for a whole bunch of reasons. It has nerfed memory. For 50 bucks more, you get so much more performance. But then you're starting to talk about... You know, a 1660 Ti is 280 bucks, and RTX 2060 Super is 400 bucks, and that's if you want ray tracing. Yeah, 1660 Ti is a good 1080p high refresh rate. Is that what you just asked for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 High refresh rate. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's probably then, the best one for, for that. For 2060, it would be if you want the the. You may want to play with ray tracing, albeit at lower quality settings yeah. for because that has less performance okay uh next step up 1440p 60 hertz so 1440 27 inch panel um 1440p things get bunched up a whole lot with all these new cards uh what are the good i would options? recommend good options here radeon rx 5700 for 350 bucks would be the cheapest one i would strongly recommend that that gets really good performance okay uh and like I said, its memory configuration is much stronger. It has two gigabytes more capacity, wider memory bus than the RTX 2060 non-super, which is still around. Uh, so I would definitely recommend the RX 5700 as the go-to. Uh, especially because once you start bumping up to 1440p, uh, you use more memory. So get the one with more memory. Uh, the 5700 XT and 2060 Super are both options as well if you want to get a little bit more performance uh, or if you want ray tracing in the case of the 2060 Super. Uh, if you want to go high refresh rate 1440p gaming, um, those those cards could do it in a lot of games, but if you really want an across-the-board high refresh rate yeah. 1440p gaming, you're going to want the 2070 Super now. Okay. And, and then don't buy anything right now <laughs> that costs more than $500 unless it's the 2080 Ti. Because the 2080 Ti is staying where it's at. NVIDIA is not messing with it. Everything between the $500 RTX 2070 Super and the 1080 Ti, don't buy. Because the new RTX 2080 Super is coming out in a few weeks. And we got to see where that lands. I was going to ask a snarky-ass question. It's like, what if I want to buy a 1080 Ti, bro? Actually, actually mm. somebody said that in the chat. Uh, 1080 Ti still works really well for 1440p. Yeah, you know what? I went to go before I asked that question. I said, I'm going to go see how much it costs on Newegg and Amazon. Guess how much a 1080 Ti costs. How much? It's $1,000. What, new? A 2080 Ti. No, no 1080. 1080 Ti's. Really. 1080. Yeah, but what, a, what about a refurb? $900. Did you look at the refurbs? They were just, look, here's a 1080 Ti EVGA uh, FTW3 Gaming, $879. Brad, would you recommend I buy a 1080 Ti for $879? No, and you should turn over your buying decisions over to your fiscal accountant. Yes, or whatever. I will let Elena handle that. <laughs> you can get by with the 1060. What? What? They haven't made that for 12 years. That's ah, just... <laughs> no, yeah, was, the 1080 Ti prices have not aged well. I clearly were at that's, the end of that's inventory. That's what happens as they go away. Yeah, yeah like, look, here's a, the very top card on Amazon. 
1080 Ti EVGA card is fourteen hundred and forty eight dollars. Okay, so that hey, you know what? Maybe somebody's got money to burn. They, you know, they yeah. really like uh, that architecture. I just I don't know mm. where where does that leave the twenty seventy? So twenty seventy is like mm, twenty seventy. Like... Nvidia actually, we asked them about that in the briefing before these launched. Uh, pardon me. And they expect the twenty sixty to stick around, non super. I'm talking about non super cards right now. The twenty seventy is gonna go away. Oh. Because the 2070 Super wumps its butt. The 2080 is also going to go away. Because presumably the 2080 Super is going to womp its butt for the same price. Oh. So the the end NVIDIA product stack is going to be $350 6 gigabyte RTX 2060. $400 RTX 2060 Super. $500 RTX 2070 Super. $800 RTX 2080 Super, which is coming out on July 23rd, and 2080 Ti is still up there kicking butt. But isn't, isn't this 2080 Super going to be get so close to that 2080 Ti, people are going to be like, oh, what do I want to spend that extra money for? You know, I, I don't... 2080 we'll was... see. I guess you're right. We have to see it, but I, I just kind of like... If every single card gave you the next card's performance at the previous card's lower rung... They've already released specs for the 2080 Super, some technical specs, some high-level stuff. It's not going to match a full 2080 Ti, but it should go much faster than the base 2080. Yeah. So we'll have to see. You know, and I'm going to bring this up because I, you know, I don't get to play with the high end stuff like Brad does anymore with GPUs. But <laughs> mm. I, I, on the other end, I don't have a 12 core. You don't have a 12 core, but I did 2080 <laughs> Ti testing for the CPU reviews because clearly my my 1080s were not holding up. I have three 1080s that I use in, in the test rigs, and like I could not believe how fast that 2080 Ti was. Oh, I yeah. mean, it was just with these high end CPUs. Oh my God! It was it would the 1080. I've always considered to be a wonderful card. And it's an excellent card. It's just like you. That's going to give you warm memories for a long time. But after playing with that 20 Ti, I was like, Holy smokes! A 1080 is just a piece of garbage. <laughs> it's just a piece of garbage now. I can't believe it. It's like it used to be, you know, five hundred dollar car, but the 2080 Ti was like fifty percent faster. And yep, a lot of things are huge. Ran. It's, it's like a huge difference. Holy smokes! That's just, you know those old, like, what is it, Memorex, I think it was, commercials where the dude was sitting in the chair and just everything blown by? That's what's like using a 2080 Ti. Yeah, but I'm just kind of like, I because ne I never got to experience it, but I'm like, why would you ever complain about the 20? People could really, they were really unfair to the 2080 Ti, it feels like. I mean, I know I, $1,200 is a lot of money, but damn, that thing is just smoking fast. I think... It's I don't what I don't like about the 2080 Ti is how Nvidia handled it with the Founders Edition because it said hey this is a thousand bucks Founders Edition is gonna be twelve hundred bucks though because we give it a five percent overclock or whatever, uh, but Founders Edition pricing effectively sets the floor so yeah. I mean now these days you can sometimes find eleven hundred dollar 2080 Ti's but they're still most well over twelve hundred bucks, yeah. so I mean that was my issue with it I find it very interesting. That these new super cards, the Founders Edition models, aren't going to be overclocked, and they're all going to cost baseline MSRP. So they're actually reference cards again. Oh, so that with the exception of the 2080 Ti, that's still going to be twelve hundred bucks. They're not messing with that. <laughs> that's just weird, right? Because that last round, the Founders Editions were overclocked. They were the plus one cards. Now mm -hmm. they're just the zero cards again, which is where they're always yeah. supposed to be the baseline. But now they're going to all. I'm just still that but, that that 2080 Ti just like damn that thing is just. But, but if you were holding out and you didn't buy a 2080 because you're like that's still the same performance as the GTX 1080 Ti but with ray tracing, which is a valid complaint and a complaint I had when it came out. Now you get that performance for 500 bucks in the RTX 2070 Super. So no more complaining, Brad. Officially, <laughs> you cannot complain, Internet, about that. I am not complaining about it whatsoever. 350 bucks to 500 bucks. We've had four graphics cards launch over two weeks now, and life is good if you were in that price range. <laughs> yeah. Uh, TM Tech is asking, do you think they'll release a 2080 Ti Super? <laughs> um, they gave no indication of that whatsoever. They were they're like the GTX or RTX 2080 Ti is still at the top. That's all they said about that. <laughs> it seems like NVIDIA. I would German. doubt it. Yeah, it you can't, seem like that's it. pretty fully functional implementation of that GPU. Uh, I don't think they could add much more to it without rolling out a new GPU. And part of the reason they they say that they're able to get 
the price is so much lower and shift these performance tiers down a notch basically uh is because you know it's been a year now since rtx series was introduced so they have efficiencies building these chips so i wouldn't anticipate them rolling out a whole new chip just to make a 2080 ti super when amd at this point is not even coming close to 20, 2080 Ti levels of performance. Yeah, it's even surprising they're going to do a 1080 Super because effectively AMD doesn't compete against the at that range. 2080, 2080 Ti. It's so hard to get used <laughs> to that. Effectively, yeah, AMD, AMD doesn't compete. AMD's new chips, like I said, at least in a few games, they are very competitive with their $400 Radeon XT with the $500 2070 Super. So oh. NVIDIA still wants that middle ground too. Like if you're going to get a 4K gaming chip and you don't GPU and you don't want to spend twelve hundred dollars, I'm guessing the 2080 Super is going to kick all sorts of ass. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Nice. Nice. Because the the 2070 Super, just like the uh, 2080, just like the GTX 1080 Ti, um, they can do 4K. It it's not great. You can't just hit max and just play every game. So uh, that's where the 2080 Super is going to fill that notch. Right now, it's the 2080 Ti. I'm guessing the 2080 Super will get a lot closer to it too. Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like we're only halfway through the year, and our uh, our best uh, best of 2019 episode later in the year is going to be pretty crazy. <laughs> it's oh, insane, yeah. <laughs> especially for the GPU side. Everything. I mean, who who could just yeah. Yeah. I don't hand out Editor's Choice Awards very easily, but of the four graphics cards that released over the past two weeks, three of them got it. It's just, huh. it's amazing. Well, 5700 XT? Didn't. Oh, okay. So 5700. It didn't in its current form. If it was an add-in board card, I probably would have been much more likely, but it does run hot. It's a little bit louder. You know, it's just the implementation, I think, that's holding back the 5700 XT. But the base 5700 and the two Supers, all three got... Yep. Ah, Good time. If I got to break my back and, you know, delay family vacations to review things, mm -hmm. I want it to be stuff like this. I don't want it to be garbage. This is all great stuff. <laughs> that would have sucked, wouldn't it? I was just like, you really? I, I had to delay my, my vacation. I was I did too. I, I basically literally ran benchmarks ran out the door, came back, ran them uh, after vacation and ran some more. It's just like, it would have, it would have stunk for like just a stinky part, right? That was just like, that's what I also run our games coverage. That's the thing people don't understand. They're like, Oh, reviewing games for a living must be awesome. It's like, yeah, it is. If you're playing, you know, grand theft auto five, but it's not when you're playing 60 hours of a game, that's going to get 1.5 stars. <laughs> I have a, not, I have a, Fallout 76. I'm going to remind me to tell you my not safe for work analogy of what it's like to review games. Uh Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> now everyone, Everyone's going to want to know. It's not safe for work. Uh, I'm really interested to see what AMD does next with RDNA. I'm looking forward to see if this was just like the mid tier. I'm curious to see if they can scale RDNA up and actually, like, this takes it to Turing, man. Like, these cards are great. I'm curious to see if they can scale it up, take it to Turing even further. Hmm. Yeah, boy, I don't know what's left. I mean, it's it's only July. Yeah. What else can they do, right? But I mean, I swear to God, it feels like got the KS part coming out on the CPU side. <sighs> yeah, we got the KS part. part. We got the 2080 Super. We got the uh, 3950X. 3950X. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a uh, Threadripper at some point. God, I can't. Uh, and we're going to get the rest of AMD's product stacked the rest of this year. I mean, this is just the mid-range cards. They still need the Polaris replacements. They still need the higher-end replacements. I'm real curious to see. This is a crazy year. There were rumors I had heard at Computex that Intel had something coming too, but they delayed it. Mm -hmm. A competitor to Threadripper is what I had heard sort of rumbles of. So that could pop up too. I just And then next year, NVIDIA is going to go to 7 nanometer. Intel is going to launch its first graphics cards. Good times. It's a good yeah. time to get into uh, PC building, right? <laughs> who can, I just, yeah. who can, I, you really, that's what I love too, is the, is in all the maneuvering. I know people think that I mean, you're a little skeptical of the, of the 3D chess, of the price cuts, you know, like, I don't maybe, think it matters either way. Yeah. So I just, I, I really feel like the maneuvering between the three, because there's now three people, three companies competing, 
that the maneuvering has gotten more Game of Thrones like than ever before. It's like if you move here, we move there, but we know you're going to move there, so we're going to move over here. But you know, we know, you know, we're moving here. So then we're. I I think there is. I know it's crazy, but I do think there is some validity to it sometimes. Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were actually playing five D chess. I'm not saying they are or aren't. Who knows? But. For them to make that announcement on Friday and then have all the vendors and retailers launch at the correct new pricing as planned on Sunday would take an awful lot of management. So they might have been playing 5D chess this whole time with these prices. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because how do you just suddenly <laughs> redial it? But I think because they also, they're also they also managing not only are they managing competition with NVIDIA, they're managing leaks with their vendors. So mm-hmm. there's all kinds of different things that they're the, the, and then it's just the days of where somebody said we're coming out with a part in six months. Here's our roadmap, and it lands there at that price. Those, those, it feels like those days are gone. It's. I was literally told that. Well, I don't want to say too much. I was told that one of the large companies, this the pricing is set at the very last minute, and we're talking the head honcho in top gets basically the menu, the options. Here's what we do here. They put their check mark and they go with it, and then they tell they go out on that stage and they tell you five minutes later because there's no other way to manage. The, the leaks, because the leaks really do ruin a lot of things for their uh, strategies. And and there's also, they're trying to feel out what the competition is doing. So I, I don't know anymore. It's a, it feels like we're in a, in a brave new world as far as the, the, the uh, maneuvering over five years ago or even two years ago. I have also heard that story from a couple different people. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, a couple, couple more questions. Uh, Brad, uh, any indication of Navi coming to, to laptops? Have they talked about that at all? Uh, no, they haven't. AMD hasn't talked about mobile implementations of any of its new stuff yet. It's launching uh, desktop first. Uh, to shift gears for a minute, one thing that I wanted to mention that didn't really fit into any of this talk because it's not it, it's coming out in the new Radeon software release. Uh, Radeon Chill, which is their software uh, to basically in scenes that are mostly static, it dials down the frame rate to save power use and it can be very efficient at that like you can save a ton of power using radeon chill uh and it doesn't really noticeably impact your games in most situations uh i like it a lot they're adding new technology to that for all existing radeon graphics cards and it will now automatically detect if you're using a 60 hertz monitor which the majority of people are and it'll dial it back even further because until now it defaults to the low end of 72 fps and the high end of 144 fps to set when it goes static and start dialing down power usage so now they're adding technology to make it aware for 60 hertz frames and they configure their things around there and it says amd claims it's up to 2.5 more power savings than before especially in esports style games so if you have a Radeon card, regardless if it's the new Navi ones, one of the old ones, and you like Radeon Chill and you have a 60 frames per second monitor, I would recommend going out and trying that out. You think that's um, something designed mostly for upcoming laptop graphics? Because power savings is... Radeon Chill was designed because AMD's GCN architecture, to stay competitive with NVIDIA, they really had to... Oh, right. beat the beast with a lot of energy so they were using software tricks to dial it back it won't be such a big problem with navi but if you can get it and it doesn't fa- impact your gaming performance might as well use it yeah you know what's a little crazy is and this goes all the way back 15 years ago but if you this uh a pc vendor was telling me this and i i tested it years and years ago but you and i've seen youtube videos where if you are playing very strangely a very low end, low resolution or low graphics quality game, but like at mm-hmm. 800 frames a second, it will use a crap load more power than playing yep. a game at 4K with ray tracing and all the fanciness turned on. It's really kind of weird. I haven't tested mm-hmm. it recently, but I mm-hmm. imagine that's Makes the sense. same thing that you're seeing with this this uh, radio Radeon chill, chill, right? So, yep. Mm. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah, all the recent, I, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Radeon Chill introduction. And Vega using HBM2 and PureX using HBM2. Those are all power saving measures because their power efficiency has flat out sucked recently. But with Navi and RDNA and 7 nanometer, it's right on track with Turing. So AMD deserves a lot of kudos for that. I imagine a lot of the power savings are from ditching HBM2, right? I mean, it's, it was never really. HBM2 is more power efficient than GDDR6. Is it really? So, hmm. Yeah. God, I guess it was just simply Vegas that were eating all that juice then. 
Probably. Vega needed a lot of juice and for fury. the chip. Yeah, and for the chip itself. And you could only make graphics the entire graphics card consume so much power if you don't want to get laughed out of the place. So switching to HBM2 let them do that. Ah, right. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Any uh, questions we need I don't, to I don't, I don't think they ever officially said that. That's just me speculating. No, that makes sense, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a couple more questions. Uh, this one's for Brad from Wings Cancer on uh, our Discord. Um, now that we've seen Navi uh, on the... The, the PC side, do we have any indication of what that'll look like on the uh, the next-gen console side? Those are... I mean, one, the architecture kicks all kinds of butt, and I am much more excited for the consoles now that I know that our DNA is a great step forward. Uh, there's such custom implementations that we can't tell for now. Uh, you can't... Once they start releasing more specs about, you know, how many, uh, what are they called on AMD? The streaming multiprocessors, like all the under the hood details, you, we could look at these and draw comparisons to the new consoles, but until those come out, we can't really tell. And they are a custom implementation because like the next gen consoles are going to have ray tracing. These don't. So... At the moment, no. Once they start saying, yeah, we've got X amount of, you know, graphics clusters and X amount of, you know, shaders and stuff like that, then we'll be able to do a lot more. But I'm much more excited with them now that I've seen and tested our DNA in action. It seems like a great GPU architecture. Yeah. I mean, I, I think these next gen consoles are going to be really nice for console yeah. players. I mean, it's going to be a big, it'll be a big hardware jump for them, right? I mean, really yeah. big between yeah. CPU and GPU side. Great stuff. <clears throat> Going um, up against seven nanometer NVIDIA parts next I'm, year and 10 well, I'm nanometer looking forward. Intel. You know what I want in AMD is if they listen to this, they're going to hate me for saying it because I'm sure their new Ryzen 3000 APUs that launched today are great compared to what was there before. That being said, the Ryzen APUs that launched today have 12 nanometer Ryzen last gen and they still have Vega last gen. Next year's Ryzen APUs, if they jump to these new Ryzen 3000 cores, and Navi are going to be smoking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, the more significant part of that, I think, is 7 nanometer, <laughs> Ryzen 7 nanometer um, Navi in a laptop. It's going to be a yeah. whole different ball game when AMD yeah. comes out, when they finally get these laptops out with 7 nanometer parts. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be good for laptop buyers because competition, you know, makes gives you better things, consumers. So mm -hmm. it'll be good. A uh, lingering question from uh, Steve Anderson on YouTube. Thank you, Steve. Uh, they do not do content creation. Uh, would you recommend they replace their R7-1700 with a Ryzen 3000 series? I'm considering... I, I'm going to speak from my own personal experience. Re after reading Gordon's review and some of the other reviews on the internet, because I'm a firm believer in being as informed as possible when you're spending hundreds of dollars on things. Uh, I'm personally planning on groveling to my wife to ask her to allow me to buy, like I was saying, one of the 8-core Ryzen 3000 chips because of the big increase in gaming performance. So if you game a lot, especially if you game at 1080p, uh, it might be worth spending the money to upgrade. Uh, that being said, I still find that Ryzen games all right. At the resolution that I play at, often it's more graphics bound than CPU bound. So if you're playing a 1440p or 4K, it's probably less worthy of an upgrade if you don't do content creation. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, the, the old rule which still holds is if it works for you, don't don't upgrade. Yep. I mean, it never makes AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA happy, but if it's working for you, you don't mind it, don't upgrade because it always gets better. That's the rule that always sticks around, but that doesn't mean go on the internet and be like, oh, I should have waited two years. You should have told me not to buy this. That's not what we're saying. Not what we're saying. Yep. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Dennis uh, was asking uh, Gordon, uh, when are you going to replace your uh, your PC at home, your Xeon? <sighs> God, I need to, right? It's, it's not even a... Yeah, I, I do need to. It is a Xeon. I forgot. I, I <laughs> really need to. I'm just too lazy. I'm just too lazy. You don't want to... And what's you your don't GPU in there? The, oh, boy. I think it's a slow ass 1080. Because now I realize yeah, I have a, a 1080. Now, <laughs> it's, it's, 
It's not slow when you put it with a decade old Xeon, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually, I'm mean, just like, it's really sad, but like my eight core Xeon, like I, I swear to God, like I know, I know that a, a Coffee Lake or a Ryzen three would just even a, a even a second gen Ryzen would probably kick its ass all day. And it's just kind of funny, but again, the like the rule we it's just gave to done. you. Well, what do I care? What I'm doing, it doesn't matter. So I, I don't think it matters. I would probably upgrade for the other reasons, like. You know, I need. I'm still on SAT SSDs because yeah, USB. Yeah, it's 3.0. on X79. There's just like so many USB ports are just getting all funky. It's like you've got this car. The engine's great. Transmission's great. Half the windows don't roll down. The lights don't turn on. You know, it's got a leak. A couple I, leaks and I, everything. I had a station wagon like that. <laughs> yeah, this computer's <laughs> feeling like that. It's like, oh, it would be nice. That was actually the big difference when I. The reason I shifted, I built a new PC and went to Ryzen was because of all those extra things. Now I have NVMe drives and stuff like that. Yeah, isn't it? It's just a, it's just a nice. It's like getting a yeah. fresh new car smell and everything works and it's nice. You get modern standards. So I don't know, not yet. <laughs> One day. Uh, all right, and then uh, my last question. Uh, this is kind of to to both of you, uh, also from Dennis. Um, what did you guys do for the last month to not burn out from work stress? Any special diet, anything like that? I am burnt out from work stress. My shoulder hurts. My elbow hurts. I haven't exercised or ate right in like two or three weeks now, and I need some time off. <laughs> 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 Nothing. I just worked until because I had to, and I kept working because I had to. <laughs> yeah I just, it's the same thing I, I agree it's just like you have sort of no choice but I think the thing is people who work this side of the, the aisle you're just sort of like you're, you're in it for the excitement like everybody 100%. We, everybody likes to complain like oh my god all these parts this is like the worst NDA but oh my you just love it because it's exciting it's like any news junkie or any hardware junkie it's exciting to to be a part of to to to, to see you know we're basically written we're we're here to cover it and to have things to cover is exciting so it sucks but at the same time we get off on it too so it, it's a really horrible vicious circle i think especially because like i said these are great products if they were sh oh. crappy products yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what i wound up doing the last couple weeks actually is just i live in the middle of nowhere with a great view of some mountains and like my brain after work couldn't even like handle watching tv i would just go sit outside and listen to music and look at the mountains and stuff <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm just trying to think of like some of the bad products. Yeah. Or, or Vega 64 is something I also had to crunch a lot for, and I was mad about it at the end. But Vega 66 being 56 being good, balanced it out. Because like Gordon says, it is cool to have these things that nobody knows about, and you know it pushes stuff forward, and you want to be like, oh, everything's going to be different in a week. Yeah, figuring that out, testing I it. I think there was definitely a time when there was was no competition, like the sixty nine fifty, the the ten core Broadwell E part, a seventeen hundred dollar one, seventeen dollars and twenty three dollars. It was, <laughs> I mean, it was fast. It was better. There were a lot of cool things like the Turbo Boost, you know, three whatever. So you had the individual, but it was just sort of like, it just was like, it just felt it was in a vacuum and it needed something to offset it. And it's more exciting now than it was before. So that yep. was just sort of like you were killing yourself for CPU that competed with another Intel CPU and that they didn't really want to compete. So they priced them so crazy that it didn't even matter because they were just sitting around like the Maytag, you know, repair person waiting for somebody to come along. And now it's exciting again. So, that, I mean, it wasn't a bad product. It was definitely overpriced, but, you know, it was cool. So you still got the witness sort of like the height of kind of the... the so one thousand seven hundred twenty three dollars <laughs> for a ten core CPU to say that now, yeah. and that wasn't that long ago, which is nope, a crazy. No, it was so. not. So I wouldn't say bad product, but a mm. bummer. All right. Uh, well, Gordon, why, why don't you take us out? Uh, it's, okay. been, it's been a long show. So much has been talked about, uh, and there's still more coverage changed. coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it could change. I just, it's, I love it. This is awesome. It's going to change again next year in twelve months. We'll be looking back like, holy smokes! I can't believe we thought this was what. So <laughs> that's my prediction. But check back next week for your fix of PC talk on the full nerd for audio listeners. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Send questions and comments to the full nerd at PC World dot com. Every time you do, we get a little extra sleep. Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon I'm with Brad Charkas. 
Don't buy Radeon 7. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, that's such a burn. <laughs> and Adam Patrick Murray's going to hit the L switch. Uh, go buy a really cheap refurb 1080 Ti. Yeah, it might be good for you. Just kidding. It won't. No. Bye. <laughs> oh.